in this demo we will learn how to uh, in configure the Coriolis uh, applications. We are now logged in into the master node and we are going to change directory into the source code. Now that you're in the source code directory uh, you want to change directory again and go in the applications directory and then type L and here you will find a Coriolis readme file that lists all the files that need to be edited in order to configure such an application. So I'm going to VI this file. So this example shows a simple inertial oscillation by solving the 3D equation in a uniform density ocean with periodic boundary conditions in both the north-south and east-west direction. This example can be run also with model floats to show how particles in the model undergo circular motions. In order to configure these examples, there are three files that needs to be added. The first file is uh, inside this directory and it's called Coriolis underscore CPP devs dot H. And this is basically the file that enables uh, all the portion of source or Fortran source code that you want to retain in order to run the Coriolis application. So in this particular file you will switch on or off uh, the definitions uh, you know concerning the physics, the boundary conditions and so forth. Uh, then there's two more files um, that are actually uh, source uh, Fortran codes. Uh, the first one is models uh, inside the models directory and it's called mod underscore param dot f and the second one is nonlinear slash analytical dot f. The mod param files is edited to define the number of grid points whether the analytical dot f file which is the second one is edited to define the analytical initial conditions since this is an analytical uh, experiment the computational grid, for example the spacing in meters of your grid size and the boundary conditions. So let's start by looking, this demo now is going to focus on configuring the cpp-defs.h file. Now in the previous demos you've seen you've run already the Coriolis example and in fact there's already a cpp-defs file here that is uh, configured for you. So if you go in here you find that there are already some switches uh, that are present in the file. But let's understand what these switches are. Uh, and let's actually um, try to, to rewrite this file uh, without knowing what the switches are. And to do that I've prepared uh, a template uh, that will help you in, in preparing this configuration. Let's open this template. So this is again define Coriolis which is the application, if define Coriolis which is the block of code that will contain the options that we're going to enable. And so here there are six sections of options that you want to think about when you configure a new application. The first one is the model physics. The second one is the computational grid and initial conditions. Then you have to think about surface boundary condition because now you're solving the equations in a, in a three-dimensional volume and so not only you have an initial condition like in the case of 1D uh, oscillations in time but now you have also a spatial dimension, the surface, which needs a boundary condition, and also the bottom, the bottom of the ocean, which you have to provide bottom boundary condition. You also have, uh, this is a domain in the horizontal, so you also have to give, provide lateral boundary conditions. And then you may want to provide other options, like for example in this case, we may want to uh, include these floats. So how do we figure out what model options we want? Well, first let's, let's go another line. And in a different window here, I'm going to click on a different window. I'm also going to go in the applications directory and open a file called readme.txt which contains an explanation of all the available options in the model. So here it says a detailed description of all available CPP options. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to select the model dynamics for the momentum equations. So as we go down we find all these, uh, these um, the list of the possible definitions. So the first one is uv underscore adv which turns on and off the advection terms. Now if you think of our simple Coriolis inertial oscillation equations, these did not contain an advection term. In fact, they were linear equation, and so typically then we don't want this term. Now here is turn off on the Coriolis term. Well, we definitely want this, so we're going to select this option here. We're going to go back to our other directory, and we're going to paste uh, this in here, and we're going to define this option. Okay, so the first option we, that, we, that we want to find. Then we go back to our editor window and we keep going down the list. Now here 
it asks you what type of advection scheme you want to use but in this case we don't have the advection term so we can just neglect this and there's other stuff like for example Laplacian horizontal mixing but we don't have a mixing term so we're just gonna skip all this and then we come here and there's a switch here that says for example logarithmic bottom friction or linear bottom friction or quadratic bottom friction these are options concerning the bottom boundary condition of the momentum equation and so we need at least to provide one bottom boundary condition for the momentum equations so in this case I'm going to pick to use a linear bottom friction okay so I select this option here and go back to the ROM source code now this is a boundary condition so it's really not part of the model physics but it's part of the bottom boundary conditions so I'm going to go here and I'm going to introduce this option here and I'm going to define it so now I've defined also a bottom boundary condition for the for the momentum and I can go back to my editor window and uh, I'm not going to use the quadratic boundary and I'm not going to have sources and sinks so this first part is done and then I'm going to uh, go down here for the tracer equation now for the tracers equation uh, again I only have uh, I want only to keep temperature and uh, I'm going to define that later and um, these other things are all types of advection scheme I can use for the temperature now one thing that is nice is the fact that uh, for the advection schemes or in general uh, there are some predefined options so in this case I don't really have to care about this and, and if I don't do anything uh, for the temperature this is just going to be provided uh, with some standard options now there's one thing that you want to keep in mind which is that uh, the density uh, controls uh, the motion of flows and so you have to decide whether you want to use a linear equation of state which is the equation of density or nonlinear equation in this case I just want to leave the default uh, which is a linear equation of state so I'm not, I don't need to do anything um, now if we go further down uh, there's other types of physics like uh, the pressure gradient uh, you know how to solve the pressure gradient term and uh, in this case uh, I am not interested I don't have any uh, kind of pressure gradient term because uh, there's no um, temperature gradients in the model because we have a uniform flow and uh, and so although we do have a free surface which can also produce uh, uh, pressure gradients but in this case we just leave the default and we don't touch this now one thing that that is not contained in this first part is the fact that we want to solve the three-dimensional equations and so that's a specific option that uh, you will remember and uh, and it's called solve 3d and it's right here where you select other types of the model configuration and in fact we want to use this option because we want to solve the three-dimensional equations again so we go here and this is going to be part of the of the physics here so we're just going to paste it there and we are going to define that okay now well, this is all we want really for the model physics for this particular example and and through experience and through looking at these uh, at this readme file you can learn more about this but for now you will have to take my word for this first example now for the computational grid we want to use analytical uh, computational grid so I'm going to look for Anna and these are, are all options that concern analytical setup in the model so if we if you go through here you see there's a whole bunch of them but there's one in particular that I want to keep which is the fact that I want to set up an analytical grid so I'm going to select this uh, this option here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to introduce this option right here so I'm going to define this uh, CD define okay uh, I then uh, want to also uh, use some initial conditions that are analytical and in fact if I go here I can find that the option is right here so I'm just gonna grab this one and I'm going to define it okay now surface boundary conditions we have to provide surface boundary condition for the momentum and surface boundary condition for the temperature which is the the tracer uh, we don't have salinity in this case so we're not going to need to configure salinity and so if we go here you'll find that at the very top there is a um, sorry up down here somewhere you find that there is something called um, this option here which is analytical surface momentum stress which is the surface boundary condition for the U and V velocities so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to 
uh, introduce it here and once again I'm going to define this option okay and then I need to find an, a condition for the temperature and if you look in the file it's actually pretty straightforward uh, the way this works is just instead of having uh, ANA S which stands for surface momentum flux it's actually surface uh, temperature flux so that's really very simple and you can look it up in the readme file in fact you can search for that ANA underscore ST flux and it's right there okay so that's that so we've done now with the with the surface boundary condition now we have to do the bottom boundary conditions and we already have the bottom boundary condition for the for the uh, momentum and we have to provide one for the temperature and if you go back and look at the readme file you'll find that it's actually very similar definition as the surface T flux condition but in now it's going to be bottom so the S turns into B and you can look it up in the file now I'm helping you here and so we now we've done with the bottom boundary condition section and now we have to worry about the lateral boundary conditions so let's go we said that we want a doubly periodic domain so let's look for uh, boundary um, boundary conditions okay we don't find anything uh, let's look for periodic okay and if we go down here we find that um, in fact there's a there's a oh here you go there's a section on set lateral boundary condition I, I, I advise you to print this file so that you can actually look at it in paper which is easier to look for uh, things and so here we're going to define the east-west periodic and the north-south periodic boundary conditions so I'm going to uh, just uh, grab these these two um, oops. okay so wrong source so now I'm going to go back here and define the east-west and then I'm going to define the north-south so I don't need to go back and just know that it, this is the option okay so now we've done the first uh, six pieces and then I said that I was interested in using floats and so if we go back to the readme file and we look for floats we find that the option to define and simulate Lagrangian floats is just uh, is just floats so we just go back here and we define that option okay so now we are basically done we have configured our, our, our application I can save that so this was the template and if you and, and this template is, is going to be identical to the Coriolis CPP devs.h file um, um, so here it is okay where all the options that we put now here as you can see in the model physics I also have this undefined UV advection which I'm going to remove because uh, we don't need it in fact and so this now is actually identical to the template file so now we have configure our template and to test whether this is working I'm going to save this and I'm just uh, going to um, you know in principle I could compile this because the example already works but we do have to um, you know edit still um, um, sorry if we look in the Coriolis readme file which is the initial file now we have to edit the mod param file and the analytical.f file uh, before we can compile and so um, this ends the demo, however, uh, regarding the CPP devs, and the next demo is going to talk about these two files.